again, let's try again, let's try again. Yeah, I can see you. Can yeah, see you. Good. Hey, yeah, good yourself. Yeah, I'm good. You had a good day? All good, thank you. Eh? Watch some good football today. Uh, enjoyed the City United game. And then obviously my team is Liverpool. So we had a good win against uh, Forest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's someone in here uh, celebrating already. <laughs> amen. amen. <laughs> I, I, I see you. Uh, well done. Well done, Liverpool. Locally, uh, are, are you still a fan of local football? Uh, Always uh, support Swallows. Uh, you know, they've been my team close to my heart, of course. Uh, Cosmos, unfortunately, they haven't done too well in recent years, but uh, those two teams have always been uh, close to me, obviously. So I, I definitely follow the birds and I'll keep on supporting them forever. Hey, shout out. Hey, speaking about that, it's kind of crazy that three of the teams you played for had some tough moments. Vets, uh, Cosmos as well, mm -hmm. and Swallows. They all got some bad news. I don't know. But I think they, I think they need mean? to they, they need to change the Sangoma. I think I think the Muti wasn't working at the club. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's one of those things. You no, know, it's one of those things in football that uh, it happens to some of the biggest teams in the world. You know, um, if you look at the likes of Leeds United, they went down from England, being a big team in England, and uh, suffering a few mishaps and then going down. So you know, Swallows was a big surprise. Uh, Cosmos. Uh, yeah, Jomo, uh, obviously, he's a, he's a great uh, football manager, knows what he's doing, and just uh, unfortunate stuff. With Vitz, I was only there for a short time, so I, I can't comment on Vitz. Yeah, I wanted to, to touch on that as well. But uh, let, let's take it from the beginning. Uh, I, I like this comment, first of all. They're calling you South Africa's Carnaval, which I personally agree. I like that. <laughs> so let, let, let's start from scratch. Growing up, what, what kind of child were you growing up? Before football, listen, it's it's I always wanted to play football. Obviously, you know, football was in my blood. Uh, my dad was a, a great South African footballer, um, so I think it was just in the blood. Ever since I can remember, it was you know come home from school and just uh, go go play football in the back garden. Thank God we had you know a few friends around that lived in the neighbourhood, so we'd play you know three on three, four on four, whatever we could play, we would. As long as there was a ball around, uh, we'd be kicking it around. So I always knew from a young age that uh, I wanted to be a footballer. Um, I remember even in school, you know, I wasn't the, the best pupil, but kids do need to obviously go to school and, you know, get their grades. But people would ask, you know, teachers would ask me what, uh, what you want to do when you finish playing school. And for me, it was such a ridiculous question. It was obviously I'm going to be a footballer. There was no uh, other sort of question or answer that it could be, you know. <laughs> you already knew from the very, very, very young age. Is it because of your father or is it because you really loved it? No, that's why. I'm saying it, it's look my father didn't push me at all i think as i said it, it's it's something that's in the blood you know uh, i think football is something it's a passion that that lives inside people and it definitely lived inside of me so i had it from an early age it wasn't uh, it wasn't something that i was pushed into or whatever it was my choice to play football you know a lot of the times i would obviously to be a professional you needed to do a lot of training and sacrifice and uh, thankfully i had that in me to you know just give up whatever i needed to or um, sacrifice whatever I needed to 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 get to the level that I needed to get to. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, let's take it from the Corinthians, right? How do mm. you join the Corinthians, and is that where you decide that okay, I'm gonna take it serious? Uh, actually, so what happened was I was at uh, Galvo and, Park before previously, uh, yeah. and then basically they got bought over by Super Sport Final. They had a they had a link, right? Uh, so at about I think it was yeah, fifteen, sixteen. I got released from Supersport, uh, so I was looking for a team. I went to Corinthians, and I think that actually helped me a lot because what happened is when I went to Corinthians, even though I was 15, I was playing in the under-19s. So I was a lot smaller, but the guys took me under their wings, you know, the likes of Luke Mavadaris, whose dad was Nick Mavadaris, who used to play, um, and Cara Texero also. They took me under their wings and gave me the confidence. So it also made me a lot more physical when I was playing because obviously there's a big gap between 15 and, and 19, you know? So... I think that gave me the confidence to say, okay, yeah, you know, you can, you can push on and, and do things. So the time at Corinthians was, was great for me and it grew, definitely grew me as a player. I, I can imagine this guy would be crazy as a young kid playing as centre-back. Were you still in the middle field by then or were you still... No, so... I, let, let's, let's take... So basically, we are back in my day, I started actually as a striker when I was under six, under seven, you know? Nah, nah. Slowly, slowly, <laughs> I moved back to the midfield, to the back. And then now I'm sitting at home 
Uh, just relax. <laughs> <and> <laughs> <I>. <laughs> no, but, you know, when you're growing up, everybody wants to be a goal scorer and everybody wants to be a striker. But I think you need to identify where, uh, especially when you get older, you know, uh, when you get to the age of like 15, 16, you need to think to yourself, you know, where can I fit in? Where can I bring the, the most to, uh, to the game? Where can I impact the game the most? So that's why I dropped into, into holding midfield. I played holding midfield for, for most of my career, to be fair. Um, and then only w- once I joined Chipper, that's when I started to play at the back. Um, I thought it was just a good move for me. I thought there could be a lot more playing time because I wasn't getting the playing time I wanted when I was playing in the middle, especially when I moved to Chipper. So, I mean, we'll go into that a bit later, but that's when I sort of started playing as a, as a centre-back. Um, looking back, I think I should have gone into that position a lot sooner, but I think playing in the midfield definitely gave me the opportunity uh, to read the game a lot better as a centre-back. Yes. Because as a holding midfielder, you basically, you, you're a screener, you're a centre-back for the midfielder. So, it's definitely helped me uh, playing centre-back when I, was, when, I, when I eventually moved. Big, big fan. You know, it, it's kind of crazy, and I, I agree with that. Everyone who played a DM, actually, let me say, everyone who was good as a DM, CM, it's most likely that any position you put them in is going to be insane because they understand the game much, much. It's like being a goalkeeper somehow. Like, you see the whole game, and when you get uh, promoted to a different, uh, let's say, you can be a winger, a striker, you already know how the game works. You already know what to expect from a, a KM. You already know what to expect from the other winger. So, you can I can read the game much better. I can agree with that. Uh, going back to Corinthians, you say. Uh, can, can you hear me? I lost you there. You've gone. You've gone dark there. I can't see. Are you back there? Yeah, there you are. Yeah, sorry, I'm kind of receiving some calls from my mom, but uh, I'll, I'll call her later. Hi, mom. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> shout out to mom. So uh, let's take it back to Corinthians. At, at Corinthians, you you're still a midfielder by the age of 15. You were a young midfielder by then. Yes, correct. So at 15, 16, I played, yeah, holding midfielder. Um, then I played at Corinthians until I basically finished school. Um, but when I was about, when I was in matric, so 17, 18, uh, I started training with Swallows first team, actually, when Gavin Hunt was still there. Um, Warren Lewis, I think, was there at the time. Mark McVeigh was there at the time. So it was, it was a while back. But uh, luckily, I got the opportunity to train with them. Um, when I was still young. So that also gave me the experience and uh, the physicality that I needed. And, that what, you know, what I could see, what those players were doing, what I needed to work on as a young player myself, it gave me that opportunity. So I then, uh, I, was, I was literally just training with the first team. Um, I finished school. I went overseas for a bit um, just to experience a bit of, like, overseas ball. I got to train with West Ham for a couple of months, came back to South Africa, um, and then I knew at that age, I was 18, you know, I needed to, you know, where am I going to go? So went on trial to a few places, uh, got told no, got told no. And I think that's it's an important part in football. You need to have perseverance, you know, because football is all about opinions. And, you know, one man might li- not like you, another is going to love you. Yeah. So yes, yes. I just persevered. I kept pushing myself. And then I signed for, I went to trial on, on Cosmo, at two Cosmos. Um, Jomo, Jomo, I was there for about a month or so. Jomo signed me. I think I signed a, a t- I think I signed a two-year deal at the time. But then still, you know, I, I signed my contract, and people think once you sign the contract that you are, uh, it's done. But that's when the hard work starts, to be honest, because yes. then you want to push. You know, you want to push and try prove yourself to get your chance in the first team. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I almost got confused because I thought you moved from Corinthians to Jomo Cosmos. So you went to West Ham first. How, how was your time at West Ham and how did that come about? So I didn't, I didn't sign. It was more uh, someone got me into the club to just go train and stuff. So I, you know, I didn't yeah. want to turn down the opportunity. So it wasn't a trial or anything like that. I think it was just an experience to uh, have a bit of taste of international football. And I think it also helped my game tremendously, you know, playing with players at that level. Um, so I think the way I thought of it is, you know, let me go over, let me sharpen my toolkit a little bit and then I come back and, you know, thankfully it worked for me because obviously Jomo could see the talent and the hard work that I put in and uh, he gave me my, my first contract. So I'll ever be for, forever grateful to Njomani. Um, I still have a great relationship with him and Bamuza. So, yeah, that was sort of where, where it started with Cosmos. Hey.
go go into West Ham first of all. It's kind of like a, a dream come true for any player. Just going to EPL doesn't really matter which team. It's, it's kind of a dream come true for, for anyone. So for you to say it was kind of like an experience thing, it's it's a bit weird because we took your money here. It didn't just fly. It, it would make sense if you said it was a trial. It's kind of weird, but you're not saying it's a trial. No, because I did you spend all that. I, 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 at that time, I didn't have uh, I didn't have any international passport. I knew I couldn't get a work permit to come play in England, so there was no chance of me signing. Even if I was the best player in the world, they couldn't. There was nothing that they could do. It was more, uh, you know, I knew some people in the game, and they obviously they vouched for me and got me in there. So it was just basically uh, training to to better myself, and thankfully they they allowed that to happen. You know, like. The, these rules, they're kind of confusing me sometimes because I, I can see that, like a lot of people can't move uh, to EPL or whatever. They have to go somewhere first, like visa stuff. Why, why is this so complicated? Why, why can't they make some exceptions for certain professions? Like, come on. Yeah, yeah. They, I look, they do. You need to, you need to play a certain amount of t uh, caps for your national team because obviously they want the best of the best, right, to be coming into the country and playing football because they, obviously there's a lot of young English talent that are talented kids. And uh, they don't want to yes. be taking positions away from those kids, you know. So I think that's why those rules are in place. And I think, you know, if you are the best of the best in your country, you should be able to, to qualify for, uh, for work permits and things like that. What you mentioned is very important. So if, if we could take something from that, we could actually develop more players for ourselves. Here. I think that's very important. Yeah, definitely. Look, I think, I think development in South Africa needs to be to be turned out, especially at, at, at grassroots level. Um, yeah. I think the development is not there. I think you know players they have coaching that don't have their their licenses or you know their qualifications. There are not many that are UEFA qualified or FA qualified, um, and you can see it. You can see it from you know a young age where there are a lot of good coaches. Don't get me wrong, but I think. They need to have something in place where it's like in England, for instance, you're not going to go get a job at West Ham or at Palace or at Spurs if you're not qualified, right? Whereas I think in South Africa, people are given a chance and stuff like that. And like, because they're young, it's like, okay, let them just go develop the youngsters. But they're not sort of qualified to do that. Yes, and, and, and they don't really know what to do because you find a, a coach coaching, like, let me say, under 15, he's focused on winning, which is wrong. At, at that age, you're supposed to focus more on developing your players. Like, the results will come, but it should be more about developing your players, not about winning 16 games in a row, which is one thing that I can see happening. Like a lot of coaches are focused on winning tournaments and stuff like that with little kids. But when those kids get to senior uh, levels, you see that they're not really that developed. They still can even, the first touch is still a problem. And yeah. yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely agree. And that's also, you know, when I was at that age of 15, 16, I used to have one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, thankfully, I was fortunate enough to get that where I knew I had to work on myself uh, as an individual to, to technically become better because yeah. uh, that's what you do. Exactly. That's what you lack. You know, it, it's kids in South Africa, they will predominantly be one foot. Whereas when you go overseas, there's no such thing as one foot. You play both foot and it doesn't matter where the ball comes. It's, it's anyhow, you know? So um, I was lucky enough and obviously had the motivation to go work and, and develop my technique with one-on-one -on -one coaching. But I think uh, in South Africa, they do need to, to focus on grassroots level and, and implement better training for the youngsters. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it's it's really calling me. Uh, so uh, at Cosmos, you spent four seasons. Yeah, that was a successful time. Because I think that's the longest time you've ever spent in a team, right? Yeah. Um, I spent four seasons at Cosmos. It was a, a very uh, close club to my heart. Um, it took a while for me to break into, to be honest with you. Um, as I said, I signed when I was eighteen or however old I was. Um, and in yeah. the first two years, I think I played, you know, one or two games. And then Cosmos got relegated from the PSL that season. And I think that's when I really got my chance because basically a lot of the players left. Um, and I saw that as an opportunity, right? So I was going to give everything I had to perform and do the best I could do to help them get back to the PSL. So that season, I think I must have missed, you know, one or two games. I didn't miss many games. We managed to win the first division and we were promoted back to the PSL. Um, and then once we got, once we went back, unfortunately, Jomo 
or maybe didn't think I was the level of the PSL, but basically, you know, I would I would start a game and then I would be taken off and then I would come on on 60 minutes and I wanted to play. Um, so about halfway through that season, once we had been promoted, I remember going to, to the club. I had a chat with my dad. Um, you know, what should I do? I want to obviously play. I'm at the age and I, I don't want to just be a utility player really at Cosmos because I also felt that I was a big part of uh, of that team coming up. I put in yes. the work and I think I, I got my straps, right? So I thought I would have had more opportunity with Jomo to, to go back into the PSL and been given a chance. But, you know, every coach, as I said, has their opinion and has, and I respect Jomo's opinion on that. Um, so I went in to chat to him and Andrew Butler, uh, Jaws of Life, who was the manager at the time. Um, and just explain the situation that, you know, I want to play, guys. I'm not, I don't want to be a part-time player. I think I've given you what I've needed to give you. And uh, we mutually, at the end of the season, agreed to not renew the contract. Um, so I was on the lookout for, for a new club. And that's sort of, uh, that's sort of when, I, when I joined Vitz. Yes, but that, that, that should be frustrating, especially uh, when you're playing. It's such a pivotal role for you to come in as a sub all the time or be substituted like you never really finish a game it's, it's not really a good thing because the position you're playing you, you want to be playing the whole game because that's not the position you want to be subbed at the people that should be subbed it's more like wingers strikers because they use a whole lot of pace they get tired you understand that it's, it's okay but you it's more like reading the game controlling the game and making sure it's it's fast when it's slow you slow it down but you don't understand that i've been doing this the whole season what, what's going on but and then again i want to ask you now that you've grown up you understand football better mm -hmm. you, you've seen like for example uh, we have cape town space they, they just got promoted and they did not buy enough experienced players and it's costing them do you look at those decisions from Joe and be like okay he was right uh, maybe i was not experienced enough or do you think this should be looked into and changed I don't, I don't know about it because I see upcoming players, they are good, but not really good enough to maintain a status. Yeah. Listen, it's, it's a difficult one because if you ask any player, they're going to tell you that they're good enough to play, right? No one's yes. going to say, no, I wasn't good enough. So personally, I think I was good enough, yes. Do I think I added a different dimension to Cosmos because I think uh, my ability and the engine that I had on me and you know my passing range was good. So... I think uh, it wasn't good enough, yes. But at the end of the day, it's Jomo's decision. It was his decision at the time. And I'm never going to question his decision. You know, it's, he's one of the biggest legends in South African football. Um, and if he didn't see that I was fit for the role, I respect that decision completely. Um, it's it's not for me to tell him that, no, I must play in his team. It's, it's his choice. And uh, at the end of the day, sometimes in life, things just don't work out, right? So yes. at that time, it was just, it was time to move. And then in terms of like bringing players in who are more experienced, yes, I agree. But it's very difficult because especially in the PSL, players are earning a decent amount of money, right? Yeah. So once you get promoted, unless the club has funding to, to pay the players, you're not going to get the players that are necessarily good enough to play. You might get players who have played in PSL, but have they really cemented themselves in the PSL? And the players that have, I don't think most clubs couldn't afford them to come play for them if they've just been promoted. And it's the same, it's the same, it's all around the world that's the same. In England, it's the same. In Italy, it's the same. In Spain, it's the same. Players that are, are well-established players aren't going to go to a team that have just been promoted. Number one, because they could go back down, right? And then, and then where does that leave the player? So it's, it's quite, a tricky, quite a tricky conversation, yeah. It's quite a tricky position to be in. Um, in my opinion, I think it's all about, you know, the, the moral of the team and the team spirit and things like that. And you need to have an anchor, you know, a good striker, a good centre midfielder, a good, a good defence. So the, the spine is strong. So if your spine is strong, I think then the, the rest of the body can flow nicely. But for me, it's about the team, the team energy and the synergy with each other. Yeah, I, I totally agree because we've seen the likes of Leicester. They came in and they went all the way up. So like they didn't even need to buy experienced experience players. They yeah. did buy team spirit and that synergy. So I, 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 I like that. Yeah. So I, before we move on, people are complaining. They say you retired very early. How, how do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, I retired early, I did. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, I always played football because I love football. And for me, it was something that 
I put my whole life into, you know, it was never a half mass. It, I was never drinking or partying. I was in bed early, focused and, you know, ready to go and do the best that I can do. So when I got to that time where, you know, I signed for Ajax, I wasn't playing at Ajax at that time. And uh, I said to my, my agent at the time, Vasily Barbas, you know, I went to, I'm, I'm done. I just, I'm not in love with the game anymore. Um, and he said to me, are you crazy? What are you talking about? Because we still had a few offers from other teams, you know? And I just said, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not enjoying going to training. And I see it now with, with Eden Hazard, you know? I don't, I'm not comparing myself to Eden Hazard, but I understand where he's saying he just wasn't enjoying going to training. He wasn't in love with football anymore. And I think that's the reason why, for me, I retired at such a young, such a young age, 28, 29, however old I was. Um, and I think, you know, it was just, I achieved as much as I could achieve. Uh, at that age, I wasn't going to go to to Europe or kick on any further. I was going to be stuck in South Africa and playing in the PSL until 35, 36, however old it would have been. So it was time for me to close that chapter. And I was happy with my career, what I've achieved. You know, um, I think a lot of people doubted me when I was younger. That was a big desire of mine to prove them wrong and prove my, my ability in the game. So I think I'd, in my heart, I had achieved what I needed to achieve in football. Fair, like uh, if you say it that way, what else can I say? Because you are satisfied, <laughs> exactly, and that, that's what matters. You being satisfied. Uh, let, let, let's go back a little bit. Uh, how, how do you end up at Chipa United? How do you go there? So, Chipa, we need to go back because what happened, we need to go to Vitz first. Because I went to Vitz, it was a bad move for me from the get go, right? Um, I shouldn't have signed there. I literally was there for a season and then. I just was like, you know, I'm tired of this place. I'm done. And I got another opportunity at that age where a friend of mine was, you know, super connected in the UK. And he said to me, you know, why don't I come over to England? You can get me into training with Spurs. So mm. I went to Tottenham and I trained at Tottenham for about, I don't know, six, seven months, maybe. Again, it was just training. It wasn't anything to like sign or something like that. I trained the reserve team. I was with the likes of Harry Kane, Andros Townsend, uh, Tom Carroll. I trained with the first team a couple of times because I was in between both. So Gareth Bell was there at the time. Uh, I think Adebayor was there at the time. Uh, Steven Pino was there at the time. So there were some great players to learn from. And I think that actually, you know, took my game from here to here because uh, the level and the pace of, of Premier League teams is such a, it's such a different and much better level than what you're used to in South Africa. So I struggled in the beginning, but then once I found my feet, I think that made me a better player. So once, once that training sort of camp or whatever you want to call it was done, um, I, had, I moved back to South Africa and I was looking for a team and I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, I was 22, I think at the time. Uh, I said, okay, well, let's, let's kick it back on because it, was, it wasn't a hiatus from uh, football, but it was a hiatus from professional football because I wasn't getting paid or anything like that. But again, I looked back and I said, okay, well, let me, it didn't, Cosmos, I wasn't playing then at, uh, you know, when they got promoted and then, you know, at, uh, at Vits, things didn't work out. So I said, okay, well, let me look at myself. Let me look where I can work and, uh, and better myself because obviously something is not working. Uh, and that's when, obviously, I went overseas, came back. I felt I was in a position now to really kick on. So I remember I went to, uh, uh, I actually went on trial to Amazulu and I thought I did really well. I thought, you know, okay, I've got a shot here. And... Um, my manager called me at the time, my agent is like, they're not going to take you on. So um, I like was blown away and I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Again, spoke to my dad. And at that time at 22, you know, it's, you're getting on, you're getting older. And yeah. I'll never forget my dad. He's like, maybe, you know, it's time to give up and, you know, start working and things like that. So in, in not so many words, I told him uh, he can go somewhere. <laughs> and I, uh, I said, I'm going to show him and everybody else, you know, and that was my attitude. Um, one of, my, one of my good friends who I grew up playing football with, Richard de Villiers, uh, he was at Whitbank Spurs at the time. So they were, in the, they were in the first division. So he said, why don't you just come here for six months and get playing again? I think it's, it's footballers forget it's such a critical point there because I think you need to be in the shop window to actually move on again. When you're at home and you're training or you're at Pirates and Chiefs and you're wearing the kit but you're not playing, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. So yeah. He, I, got, I, got, I went, I signed for, for Whitbank Spurs for literally uh five months it wasn't about money or anything like that but i played right and i played well i did well then aces came in for me and um we were discussing and there was no psl team but aces were in the first division so i said okay fine let me sign another season let me sign one year with aces and then i'll move on again 
So I signed with Aces on on uh, on the Friday. On the Saturday, we played Chipper United in a friendly uh, at the training ground. So after the game, Manjobe Maniti, he came to me, he said, Larry, have you signed? I said, what you signed yesterday, what do you want me to do? He says, no, I want you to come. I said, okay, let me speak to, to let me speak to Mr. Mario and them and just see if we can maybe agree something, you know, a transfer fee or if we can try to get out of the grill. Like the, the ink hadn't dried on even the paper yet, I don't think. Yeah. So I, I remember going in to uh, to the Aces offices on the Monday, um, speaking to Mario and them, and they saying, well, we're not going to let you go. You know? <laughs> and I said, just say. Yeah, they were like, we, we're building the team around you, you know. Because obviously, I'd, I'd proved myself in the first division, so it was something that, you know, teams would value. Um, I was unproven in the PSL by then. So at that time, teams in the first division were hungry for me because I was a proven product. Yeah. Um, and they say, we're going to build a team around you. We want to make you the captain. I said, yes, but guys, you know, I'm 22, 23. I don't have another year or two to play in the Vela League. And then the goal was always to play in the PSL. So he says, well, listen, we're not going to let you go for free. That's the bottom line. So you can tell uh, Mr. Mpigisi that's the story. And that's uh, you're going to be with us. So I was pretty down. I was driving. I left the offices. I was driving to, uh, to my agent's uh, offices at the time. And on the way there, again, my mate Richard de Villiers, he, was, he had retired. He, had, he was working in Sandton City. He called me. He said, do you want to come meet me for lunch? So I said, Richard, listen, I've got to go see my agent, but I'm actually starving. It's on the way. Let me just come meet you quickly. We'll have lunch, and then I'll go. <laughs> so, uh, it's a great story, this actually. So we go sit down at Topia Zero in Sandton. We're having lunch. As I, as I walk in, do you remember, do you remember Tepo Mabona, the TV presenter? Yeah, 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 I do. So I know Tepo for me many years right so we obviously greet each other what's happening to Apple, everything good I said, what's where you playing now i said no i've just signed for aces but you know i said chipper come in for me but i signed on friday and, and aces don't want to let me go for free so yeah. i'm gonna have to speak to to chipper and tell them that i can't come basically so, unless if they're willing to pay yeah so i said okay interesting so i sit down with, with my friend and we have lunch and the next thing tepo calls me um and i didn't know who mr Mpengisi was at the time he says, uh, Larry, this is uh, Mr. Chip in Pingisi. So he sat literally behind me at the restaurant that I went to go with my friend at. So I explained to, Ch to Chippa at the time, this is the story. You know, Mario and them don't let me go for free. Um, but I would love to join you guys. Obviously, I think I can help the team. And he said, okay, leave it with me. So then I get, get in my car after lunch. I'm driving. I get a call from Mario at Aces to say, okay, Larry, you know what? We've spoken to Chippa. We've agreed with you. You can go. So it's the best business okay. they have done. Uh, they signed for one day and they got paid. I don't know how much money they got paid, but <laughs> it was a great deal <laughs> for them. And that's where I, that's where I joined Chipper. So Chipper was also it was it was a bit of a roller coaster ride, um, you know, chopping and changing coaches. But you know, as I came in, I think I started training well, started doing well, yes. started playing a bit, and then uh, they they fired uh, Manuel Vermiti after like four or five games, I think it was. So Ooh. they brought in a new manager, Roger, I can't remember his surname, Roger someone. No, not Roger de Um I can't remember okay. the, the coach's surname. But anyway, they brought him in, a new coach. He didn't like the way I played. I was like, oh, here we go again, right? I'm like, it's, it's going to kick off again. Um, anyway, he lasted four or five games. And then they brought in uh, Farouk Abrams. So they fired Roger. They brought Farouk Abrams in, who was the goalkeeper coach at the time. And me and Farouk had a great relationship. And I think, you know, it's, as a player, it's a big thing when a coach believes in you. Yes. And, and you know, Farouk gave me that chance. You know, we, I played, I played uh, uh, a couple of games in the middle. Um, and that's where I started, started kicking on because, you know, he gave me that confidence to play. So I think the first two games I won man of the match. I scored a great goal against Ajax. I scored against Platinum Stars. And we were really on the rise. I think, you know, we were, we were competing. We were coming out the relegation zone at that time because obviously of the mishaps, what was happening before. Um, oh. Yeah, and things really started kicking off. We had Cole Alexander. We had uh, Brent Colsa. We had, a, we had a good link. And that's why I say with the team synergy, I think that we had with, with, uh, with the coach, things were, um, things were, were kicking off. Thank you, Vasily. Roger Skakana, that was the coach's name, who was at Chipper. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I remember him. You know, so forgive me, I'm kind of young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> listen, there's so many coaches at Chipper, I can't remember all of them, you know. So, 
<laughs> it was one of those things. Um, so yeah, so I started doing really well at uh, at Chipper, and um, I think that's where I started to really kick on, right? And people started to take notice, especially after like the goals I scored against Ajax and uh, Platinum Stars. People were talking, and I think I really solidified my position in the PSL at that point. Um, I then started to speak with um, with Farouk about playing at the back. I just thought, you know, we were we were leaking in late goals. I thought I could make a better, I could make uh, the the team better by playing in that position. Um, and he said, "Okay, listen, if you feel that you're better at that position and you can help the team, let's let's try it out." Um, so that's when I actually started playing centre back. Whoa, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. No, no, nobody's coaching that advice players that, you know what, I, I think uh, with your qualities, you can do this. But that's crazy that you thought about it that way. Man. He, he was reluctant. <laughs> he was reluctant. He, he wanted me to play in the middle. He didn't want me to, to go play at the back. But, you know, I just thought to myself, it would have been... Because as a holding midfielder, you, it's, more defense, it's more of a defensive job, right? Yes. So if I'm last line of defense, I think... It, it, and, I, and, it, and it did prove to be... I did prove to you, right? We started to to tighten up the defence and not, not concede late goals and start to win games. Um, so it did prove to, to, to work out for us. Um, something happened with Coach Farouk and Chipper and he got the sack. So that was the end of, of uh, Farouk at Chipper. And I think that was me coming to the end of myself at Chipper. Uh, for whatever reason, they called me into the office and... Uh, you know, they said, I'm not in the new coach's plans. I said, but guys, out of the last five matches, I've, I've scored two goals. I've won three man of the matches. How can I not be in the plans? So they said, well, that's the decision. So you can either, you can stay if you want, but you're not going to play or you can go. So I said to them, listen, okay, then let's work out a, an, a, an agreement and uh, I'll get going. So after that, you know, Leon Prince came knocking at the door Um and that's when I joined Swallows. That, 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 that's crazy because a, a defender that's scoring goals and you're, con you're making sure the team consists less and you're scoring for us. What more do you want from a defender? That's, that's crazy. Man. Yeah, it's, listen, it's... it's, 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 it's yeah, it's a, it's a, it was a difficult pull to swallow, you know, especially because, you know, you put your heart and, and blood, sweat and tears into doing what you can for the team to survive and to do well. Um, so it, it was a tough one to, to, to swallow. But, you know, my, my journey, for whatever reason, wasn't an easy journey. As you could see, there were a lot of ups and downs. But I think, you know, the kids that are coming through, they need to learn that it's never going to be smooth sailing. And you need to be able to take the knocks and the downs to keep going. Because, you know, as I've shown in my career, thankfully, that I reached the level where I got to because I was able to, to take those downs, you know, and people, whatever it was, saying X, Y, and Z, I was always able to turn that around in from a from a negative and turn it into a positive. So I think you know the kids growing up, and especially these days, people want instant satisfaction. You know, they instantly want to be a part of the first team and want to be playing. Sometimes you need to actually just uh, keep motivating yourself, keep pushing and stuff like that, and you'll you'll get you'll get your chance. You know, I like to say if you keep knocking at the door, someone's going to answer eventually. Facts, facts, big, big facts. You know, I, I, I like speaking. This is one of the reasons why I love doing this, because it, it, it transcends uh, just and ask having a conversation. It goes into inspiring other kids, and I like speaking to people like you who have like some challenges in the career. Because at this point, we have more players going through tough times than those that are having it easy. Those that are having, like, I, let me not say easy, but that are having a kind of like a direct future. It's just a few. Most of the players have to go through some tough times, so I feel joy a bit joyous when I speak to someone like you because you get to share that kind of information from the first hand, and even uh, young players know that you've been there. They can actually get to listen and understand much better. Uh, you've been through all these negative things. Did you ever, at some point, feel like, no, maybe my dad is right. I should go get a job, or maybe this thing is not meant for me? No. Before solo. Never. Never. There was ne it was always in my head that I was going to play football. There was never a chance. Come hook or by crook, as Jomo used to say, I was I was going to make it, and that's I knew I had the the work ethic, and I put in the work ethic to for it to turn around at some point. I knew that at one point it was going to happen, and that's why I'm saying like when at Chipper, that's when that that's when it started to turn. You know, 
That's when people yeah. started to realize the papers are writing about me. Then, you know, there was talk of national team call-ups and things like that. So, and then I knew it wasn't, you know, a lot of people do that, but then they take their, their foot off the gas. They put the brakes on, they say, okay, you know, everyone's talking about me now and uh, my, I've done my job. But for me, in my head, I knew that I had to push on. So that's, I, it, my, my work rate even intensified on my own stuff and working on my own stuff and staying off the training and getting in the gym and working with, you know, sports scientists and speed training and technique coaches. So it was never, it was never in my head that, um, that things were going to, to go in a different angle. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. We, we, we'll talk about him being an agent later on. Please uh, save that question for later on. So l l let's talk about you. Wait, you got, you got your national collab for, while you were at Tipa? So that came when I was at Swallows. Oh, okay, because I was that I almost got confused. Like, no. no, no, no. <laughs> so how do you get? How, how do you end up at Solos? Do you? Is it an agent? How does that work out? Yeah. So there was some talk about you know Swallows being interested, and at the time, uh, you know, I'm good friends with Ryan Boeta. Ryan was obviously at Swallows. Um, he mentioned that Leon brought him up to to him. They were in conversation. So actually, Ryan put me in touch with Leon. Um, and it was quick. It was a quick deal to be done. Obviously, you know, when Swallows come knocking such a such a big team in South Africa with such heritage, um, and especially, you know, training there when I was 18, 19, when Gavin Hunt was there, um, or even younger, I was 16, 17, sorry. It was, it was an easy decision for me. Uh, and at the time, Swallows, they were, they were struggling at the time, I think, you know, if I can remember, um, because they, they, were, they weren't winning games, they were conceding a lot of goals. So I think the the move came at the right time for Swallows and it came at the right time for me. And that's, again, you need that type of luck in football because there's so many players, there's so many positions and things like that. So uh, it just happened that, you know, Swallows were looking for, for a holding midfielder slash defender and I fitted in that role. So I wasn't sure where they were going to play me, to be honest with you, um, because it was, yeah, we need you here, a bit of both. But... We we agreed the deal. I moved to uh, I moved to Joburg, back to Joburg, obviously from Chipper being in Cape Town, um, and I think I made my debut. I came on against Tux uh, in Pretoria. Uh, we won the game one 0 but I played as a holding midfielder. So I thought, okay, they're going to play me as a as a as a holding midfielder, which was fine. I wasn't against it. Um, but then basically we had to play Super Sport in the Nedbank Cup uh, the following week. And I think Rudy Isaacs or Ashraf Hendricks got suspended. So they, you know, Zaka called me into the office and uh, we had a conversation, you know, how do I feel playing at centre-back? I said, perfect, you know, for me, I prefer to play at the back. Uh, I think I'm, I'm better suited being a centre-back. Um, and especially coming in from the midfield, I can be a more ball-playing centre-back and read the game. Yeah. So then I made my full debut for, for Swallows against Supersport. Um, and I won man of the match. So... I think that was me just, you know, putting it in there to say, listen, I'm here to, to keep my place and solidify my position as a as a central central defender, and um, myself and Roger De Costa at the time, uh, we built a great relay, like a great uh, partnership. Uh, I think we went on seven or eight game run where we didn't concede a goal. So, yeah, it was it, we 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 really did well. Uh, we had a great understanding, me and me and Roger. Uh, he was quite the hard man. Uh, I would be the more cleaning up things and, you know, playing out the back and things like that. So we complemented each other quite well. Um, of course, Ashi and, and Rudy were great to play with, but I think as a partner, myself and Roger just had a telepathic understanding of each other. Yeah, now that you mentioned, uh, yes, I, I agree, I agree. And then in front, there was Leif, I did going for Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah I, I don't know. We had Leif, oh! we had George Nagadze. We had a great team. We had David Matibule at the time. Um, obviously, Lorato Shabangu, one of the best to have done it in South African football. Uh, Dikhang Mabulani. We had, we had a great time. Uh, we had a great team, a great time. Um, and I think, you know, at the end of that season, because we, I think when I joined, we were like, I don't know, 12th or 11th. And I think we, managed, we missed the top eight by like one point or something like that. Um, so it was, it was we, we did. We had, a, we had quite a solid team. Uh, Katlejo Mashejo was there at the time, also one of the greats to do it in South Africa. Um, so yeah, that was the, the, the journey to Swallows. Craig, you talked here in the, in the post. Like, yeah, Gregor. 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 Gregor has been there. Uh, even when I was 16, 17, he was, he was there. <laughs> so he's but, been at Swallows for life. But, great guy, Greg. I don't know, but me, when I look at things, and I also check the stats to confirm what I thought, you see. Sure. Uh, 
when you were not playing, they considered more. I think if we put it into percentage, I think it was more like a, when you played with you, they won 30% of the game. And actually, they won 40% of the games and lost about 35 to 40. And when you were not in, the, the crazy thing is, when you were not in, they won, I think, 35, but they would lose like 70%. That's kind of crazy. I think it's competitions and the league. Like, uh, competitions, they would win 30%. And then the league, they would lose 70%. It was crazy. I would see your impact in there. And also, you and Roger, you protected uh, Itafia so well. Like, you protected him so well. He did not have to face a whole lot of shots like he did when you were not around. Would you agree with me on that? Yeah, listen, I, the stats don't lie. I, I wasn't aware of the stats, to be honest with you. But I do feel we, we did uh, keep a lot of clean sheets with myself and, and Roger played together at the back. Um, as I said to you, we had... We had a good link together, and I think you know we had uh, Sherry Lechotwani on the left or Papi on the left, um, and on the right uh, we had either Rudy um, or George would play there sometimes. But I think we we built quite a a team unit at the back, if that makes sense. So there was a, a good understanding. Um, so if I was able to help the team concede less and things like that, yes, it was great, and I'm I'm happy I was able to do that. But I think it was definitely a, a, a joint effort by the whole back four and Greg, of course, um, and Lifa and Georgie in the, at the, as the holding role because you, you need to work as a unit, I think, you know, as, as much as you can be individuals, especially in that last uh, defensive sector, the, the unit needs to work together because if the right yes. back goes and you're not covering, that, that leaves holes and that's what Greg, that, 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 that's what Greg goes um, in football games is the spaces that people leave behind. Yes. So I yes. think we had a, a great uh, communication and a great group along the back four with the holding midfielder. So, thankfully, you know, I was part of that with the stats that uh, we conceded less. Yes, that's, that, that's very good. And also, it, it also answers the question to why it is the second longest place you've ever, the second longest period in your career. The, the longest one is four years at uh, Domo Cosmos, and then Solos, you spent three seasons, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's the second longest. So, it shows that you were very impactful. And also, they loved you there. They didn't want you to leave. But, uh, unfortunately, there will have to be some time where you have to leave. Then, 2015-16, when you leave, why did you leave? What happened? That's, I think things just changed in the club. Um, I, I, can't, I can't tell you. I think I just felt my time was up um, at Swallows. Um, I tried to to speak to the guys and maybe I thought, you know, some of the players we brought him in were maybe strong enough. And I just thought from from my position um, as a defender, I thought it was time for a new challenge, you know. Um, so it was nothing against Swallows or anything like that. Of course, you know, the Mighty Birds have, uh, are a great side. I just think, you know, sometimes in life, uh, as I said before, you know, you have chapters. And I think my Swallows chapter, it was just, it's ran, it, it ran its course and it was time to, to move on to, to my next sort of chapter. But already at that stage, like, uh, I don't know if you saw, towards the end of my Swallows career, I got called up to the Lithuanian national team. Actually, not even Bafana, but I got called up to the Lithuanian national team. Um, and, uh, yeah, go on. No, uh, that, uh, you can talk about the, because I wanted to understand, because you were born in Jobek, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm South African, fully South African. But my my gra my great grandparents came from uh, Lithuania, so my oh, heritage is from Lithuania. He's not your father. No, not my father. No, my father is South African. It was my fully, fully South African. It was my great grandparents. So my my mom's my, my mom's mom's mom basically. So how do you end up uh, getting ties to Lithuania? Because that's I think that's pretty long. So yeah, so my agents got in touch with the Lithuanian FA. Obviously, you know, I was getting overlooked by, by, by Bafana. Uh, there was a lot of chat about me getting called up, but it just, for whatever reason, it didn't happen. Um, and I said to my agent, let's look into representing Lithuania if I can, because, you know, I think I'm good enough to play at national team level. I think I've proven myself at PSL level. And I thought, you know, at that stage, uh, if I could play international level, I could then obviously go back overseas and try create a bit of a career overseas. Uh, so my agents at the time looked into it. Uh, the Lithuania FA obviously came to watch me play. They obviously liked what they saw. Um, and then we, I got a call up to represent them in a Euro qualifier against England at Wembley. Um, Wembley. 
yeah, everything was booked. We were ready to go. And basically a week before the game, uh, FIFA wrote a letter to uh, the, Lithuanian, the Lithuanian FA to say that I'm not eligible to play because the citizenship came too far back. So it needed to come through my, gran my grandparents and it came through my great-grandparents. So at that time, it was obviously playing at Wembley, playing in a Euro qualifier, a European qualifier. Uh, it was a big dream of mine. So mentally, that's when I sort of, you know, started to dim down the light on, the, on, on football in terms of like, okay, I had to come to terms with that. I'm not going to play at national team level overseas um, with Lithuania. And now it's, let me just focus on South African football and come to terms that I'm not going to go overseas. I'm 28, 29, or 28 at the time, I think it was. Um, so let me just focus as much as I can here. And that's when the opportunity, you know, came to, to join Ajax. Uh, we had three different offers on the table. Uh, we had Super Sport, I think. We had Tux. And then we had Platinum Stars at the time, which I don't think are around anymore. Um, and for me, my family was in Cape Town. I didn't want to live in Johannesburg anymore. Platinum Stars were in Rustenburg. Obviously, Tux and Super Sport were in Pretoria. So it was more of a decision, okay, you know, let me start to filter down my life and start to go live in Cape Town, be with my family. Um, yes. And that was a big decision of, of going to, to Ajax. I think looking back at it, um, my agent, who was pushing me to obviously go join Tux and stuff like that because he thought there was a better opportunity there for myself. Um, and I think that was the right move to actually stay in Joburg or Pretoria. But I disagreed with him and I said I wanted to go to Ajax. Um, and, you know, Roger Dessau was at Ajax at the time. He saw me when I was at Wits. So I didn't plan him at Wits. And, you know, when I had a conversation with him about Ajax, it was more... Uh, you're going to come and be sort of a backup. You're not going to start. And in my head, I thought to myself, listen, I'm not 18, 20, 19, 20. Yeah, I, I, was with I said, that's fine. I'll prove you wrong. And uh, it's just not, uh, you can say that you're going to play me as a second choice defender, but it's not going to happen because I know my ability and I know what I can do for your team. So anyway, we landed signing a one-year deal. Uh, I came into the preseason camp. I thought I did really well in preseason. Um I came quite late actually because the league, I think the league had just started. So I needed just to catch up on fitness and things like that. And basically a couple of games went by and I just wasn't getting a chance. And I just thought to myself, like, it's ridiculous. Nah. It's like he's playing a right back, centre back. Um, I'm not even getting a shot here. Like, what's, and I, what's going on? So that's, at that time in my head, I was just like, okay, Let's just get to training, be professional, because, you know, we obviously always want to carry yourself in a professional way. Um, but I think that that's the point where I was like, in my head, it was starting to creep in about yeah. retirement and, you know, calling it a day, having, assessing where I am in my career um, and what sort of, what's coming next, you know? It's, it's kind of crazy how such a talent, like, did not really play at a high level for that long because bro like it's no debate that you're super super talented you. like yeah. that makes sense somehow you understand and do you do you, do you, do you think maybe going to Ajax was the wrong move do you did you ever feel like maybe you should have went to tax like look after all this uh you're not playing and stuff did you look back at it and think and feel like okay maybe my agent was right in hindsight 100 percent uh and my, my agent, he's still my very good friend now. Uh, we grew up together. So he's going to be very happy to say that he was right and I was wrong. But yes, I think uh, I definitely was wrong to, to take that decision. But again, in my head, I, didn't, I just didn't want to be in Johannesburg or Pretoria. It was more about the lifestyle for me at that point in my career, you know, um, than, than the actual football. And that's why I say, like, in my head, it was time things were starting to wind down because in the beginning... If you had sent me to Black Leopards in Toyondo, I would have gone. I wouldn't have cared about where I was. Yeah, but I think I because of the journey that I've been on, um, I think I, in my head, I'd achieved what I needed to achieve, you know? Yeah, and, and, and you've been through so much. It's, it's crazy that you've never played for the national team, man. Like it's... Yeah. yeah, listen, it's, uh, I think when Gordon was there, it was close. I know Leon spoke to me a couple of times about it. Um, but it's it's one of those things. It's one of those things that I need to accept. 
I think I was very close to being called up. I think we, I definitely could have added value to the team, but it's one of those things that just didn't materialize and for whatever reason didn't happen. And uh, it was just part of the journey. But, uh, you know, I'm super grateful for the journey that I had in football and uh, the experiences that I got to experience. Um, the people I got to learn from, there was so much that went into my career that I'm, I'm super grateful for. You know, I like to look on the positive side of things and yeah. it's like you can't cry over a spilt uh, cup of milk. So yeah. Things happen, it's happened, you know what I mean? Either, and I think you need to just move on and go on with it. It's, it's, it's one of those things. Yeah, let, I think we should close the playing chapter. Uh, but where, where did you feel like you did your best? Where do you appreciate the most? I know you appreciate every environment you've been with because the entities took you in, I understand that. But there's this place that you're very fond of. Where did you, do you think was your favorite time? I think each, each, each there were, I mean, each place had different memories for me. Uh, you know, being at Cosmos and winning the, the, the Mvela League at the time, it was a hell of an achievement and I was super yeah. proud to have done that. Um, obviously, you know, Jomo was uh, an idol of mine and, you know, to, to, win, to win that for Cosmos, to get them back in the Premier League was, was a big thing in my life. And I'm super, still today, I'm super proud of it. So I enjoy, and I love my time at Cosmos. Uh, we had some great times there. So I was a lot younger, things were a bit different, but I had a great time there. And then, you know, at Chipper, um, I think under coach Farouk, especially things, I was playing some of the best football that I played in my life. Uh, I was living in Cape Town, a great city, and I loved being in that environment. I think we had great teammates around us. Um, so things were good. And then again, at Swallows, uh, we had a very strong, in the beginning, especially a very strong bondage of brothers between us from Greg, from Lifa, from Georgie, Roger, uh, Ashraf, uh, Rudy, and, you know, I, play, I actually started my career with Tichang because he was at Cosmos when I, was at, when I first joined Cosmos. So oh. I played quite a bit with Tichang uh, throughout, throughout our, sort of uh, our paths together. So each, each chapter brought different memories for me and, and I loved being um, at those clubs at the time and having those different experiences. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I want us to move into esports. When do you get interest in esports and this is crazy because I see one of the moves you've done. Uh, you started at uh, 11 with, with Gareth Bale. That's the first move you make. Yeah. How do you start at such a high level? How do you start at such a high level? How do you... Yeah, listen, it was, it was uh, you know, obviously we, I was a big FIFA fan uh, growing up playing FIFA. A lot of the guys would play FIFA at the hotel before games. We'd always, you know, be involved in playing FIFA, just relaxing and things like that. And uh, I then moved to London once I'd retired from football. And there was an opportunity through a good friend of mine, you know, to get involved into esports. Uh, we were very close with Gareth's agent. Um, and, you know, we married the two together, saying that there could be an opportunity to create a team where we thought, you know, these esports teams will be the new sports franchises of the future. These, you know, kids are playing games professionally these, game, uh, these days. Uh, the Eleven's players were earning decent salaries and stuff like that. And obviously, Gareth being a, a major celebrity and footballer at the time, uh, I think the marriage was there and we had the connections to pull it together. So we then got involved in esports, myself and my partner, Jonathan Cock at the time. Um, yes. And we built a great team. I think, you know, in our first season, we finished second at the E-Club World Cup, which is like the World Cup of, of FIFA tournaments. Um, and the, t the team grew and grew and grew and there was opportunity there. And I think then COVID happened. Um, yeah. And everything sort of shut down, even in the esports world. So we, you know, came around the table and put our heads together and thought, you know, where can we go from here? What can we do? And we managed to build a, another brand called Combat Gaming, which was initially started as Combat Corona, where we partnered up with um, with UNICEF to create funds to help raise a bit of money uh, to help fight um, cor the coronavirus at the time. So we managed to do three events with over 10 and a half million people watching. Uh, we worked with a whole bunch of celebrities from Mason Mount to Ed Westwick to yes. Shaw. Uh, we did a whole range of events with the sort of the biggest celebrities in the world. And thankfully we helped, helped to raise a bit of money for, for UNICEF to help uh, fight against COVID. That's crazy. So, but moving forward, I see you kind of distance yourself from it or 
you killed uh, the whole is uh, 11s what what happened to it cuz i don't i don't see you posting about it i don't see any trace of it anymore what what's, what's going on even the website i think it's no longer working. yeah so I, I think 11s you know the fifa it was quite difficult to monetize and you know there was a lot of stuff with uh, brand partnerships and putting our, our kits in the game and stuff like that so it came to a point where it's like okay can we actually make money out of it and generate a revenue or is it just a, a passion project for us right um yeah. so at that time i was you know my my old agent vasily is a, a good friend of mine he's saying well listen why don't you get back into football and become an agent um you know the game you know what to do why don't we why don't we try look at doing something so i, I never really wanted to get back into football to be honest with you but uh he, he wrote me and he wrote me in and now uh now i'm addicted to the game again so that led me to uh to come on to the football scene again as an agent um he brought me into the company that he was working for called YMU group um and then that was my journey into 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 uh the football agency side of things obviously we have a, a great network in football uh, we managed to do the fashion sakala deal from uh, glasgow rangers to uh, al faya in saudi um we did another friend of mine uh, roberto defanti is a very big agent in the uk he had a player jafet tanganga tanganga at spurs um, one of my favorite yeah good very good player very good player so we managed to um i managed to broker a deal with him to move him to augsburg in germany so things are moving on the football space and i think it's just uh it was it was the bug that you know that bit me and i couldn't get away from so that's where i'm at now is you know being full a full time football agent which i love um big shout out to to vasily for bringing me back into the game of course and uh yeah hopefully we can do a lot more moves and sign a lot more players We've got a few young ones on our book that are coming through from palace and fulham um and we're just looking to for me also it's important to inspire the kids that are coming through the ranks you know because i've been through there i've been the journey and it's I, i like to give back where i can so hopefully i can advise them in terms of you know going through hard times what they need to do to sort of get to that level and uh, that's sort of where we at so uh, now we fall into agency let's close this is is was completely done you're no longer there full yeah. like you're done yeah all done <sighs> i'm not so happy with that but <laughs> i understand <laughs> it, yeah let's say it was a decision i think it was a decision that needed to be made uh they're still running the combat gaming side of things but it was a decision for me where I wanted to get back into football, you know. I think that's where my passion lied. I think that was where I was strong. I think where could I add the most value again? Same as playing football, right? What position was I to add value to a team or where I could make an impact? And I think in gaming and esports there wasn't where I was going to make my impact. I think being back in the football agency and the short time that I've been back in the game, I can see the impact I've made. I can see the strides and the and the progression where it's going. So um I think it was the right decision. and the right timing to be honest uh, and i uh, to say, when when did you start 2020 2021 uh, becoming about, an agent yeah around about then oh and already you've been you moving the likes of jafet tankanga like that yeah that's we've crazy done, <laughs> we've done some we've done some great moves you know um it's all about you know building a, the right network around you um so yeah we've we've managed to do some some nice some nice transfers and some good moves for the players you know because i think it's important that we place players where where they're going to be appreciated and where you know they can have their best route going forward yes so uh, lately i see a lot of people are trying to move into being agents scouts and stuff like that what would you how would you best advise someone who's about to be an agent right now what do you think he should avoid or what do you think he should focus on Listen, I think it's 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 about are you a people's person at the end of the day because you're dealing with people's careers and stuff like that and you know where can you add value? So, firstly, do you know the football game? Can you spot talent? Um are you able to see a player from if you go watch them are you able to see okay, he's good when he has the ball, he receives it like this, he can go like that because I think identifying talent is a is a big thing. Um and then are you good with people? And then it's just about you know learning the the FIFA laws and exams and things like that. So I think that's it's a good start just to start learning going to games checking it out see if you have a feel for it. It's not as easy as people think uh, you know you just become an agent and sign players here and yeah you need to have a good eye and you need to understand the game. 
So I think if you have the understanding and you can see players, I think it's a good start. Um, and then just try, you know, give yourself as much knowledge and learn from people. Um, obviously, I, I came from a different angle because I was a player. So I knew a little bit already about the agency world from, from the playing side of things. Yeah. But I've learned from the likes of Roberto Di Fanti, Vasily Barbas, uh, David Manassi from Stella. Uh, I think having, you know, different people around you who can teach you about the games. Um, well, not the games, the, the game in, in terms of the agency. Um, it, it will always help, you know. Yeah, I, I understand that. So, do you have a, a mentor? Because I, I hear a lot of successful people, they say you need to have a mentor. Do you personally have a mentor? Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure, for sure. I have lots of uh, mentors and friends that I learn from, you know. I think it's important to always, you know, try pick people's brains who have been in that position and uh, who, who can guide you in the right direction, you know. And it's, of course, at the end of the day, it's always your decision. But uh, it's always good to be able to, to lean on people that have been in those positions before. All right, cool. Uh, I I wanna I wanna thank you for this conversation. Because uh, I don't like taking a whole lot more than an hour. I understand you have things to do. Oh, good. But uh, I would love for us to talk again and in some time and touch other uh, departments where we can actually get to definitely teach other people more. Because I think the things that you're saying, I'm gonna make clips. Obviously, people will still learn a whole lot from the things you've said, and I think there's still more that you can teach. You understand? So I think hopefully in the future we can once again do this again. Definitely. Thank you very much for your time and thanks for you having me on. Appreciate it. God bless. So uh, what, what else are you working on that maybe we don't know about? A big pardon? What else are you working on that maybe we don't know about or we didn't touch on? No, you're going to have to uh, uh, watch the space for what's happening next. No, everything's, uh, that's basically what else we've been working on. Uh, there's not much more going on, to be honest with you. Uh, it's full focus on, on the football age side of things and uh, just seeing where we can go from there. All right, that's good. That's good. Okay, good luck with the future, my brother. Thank you very much for your time. God bless. Take care. Ciao. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Uh, let's meet again next time. We are here. It's conversation with the stars.